In this video, I'm going to tell you why Bitcoin is better than 100% of cryptocurrency out there. And yes, this also includes your favorite shitcoin. Just kidding. But I am going to compare Bitcoin to XRP and Casper since these two cryptocurrencies are some of the most popular cryptocurrencies out there right now. Okay, let me start by saying I am not a Bitcoin maxi. I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. As a matter of fact, if you watch this channel, you know I own various cryptocurrencies. I've been working in this industry since 2017 and I even wrote the book, The Crypto Factor. But a lot of people on social media and YouTube are saying that this cryptocurrency is better than that cryptocurrency or my cryptocurrency is better than yours without really giving a reason unless they're quoting what they heard from other people or read from other people without themselves actually understanding what they're talking about. The same people say that Bitcoin is old tech, that other coins are faster, that Bitcoin can't scale. And with all due respect, if you are someone that's saying this, then you don't really understand Bitcoin. Or as a matter of fact, you don't understand cryptocurrency in general. So what I plan to do in this video is explain Bitcoin to you as simply as possible so you can understand it. Then you can talk about Bitcoin, you can talk about cryptocurrency without looking like a complete moron in comment sections and on Twitter, for example. And if you still think after this video that your cryptocurrency is great and is better than Bitcoin, that's fine. Okay but at least you'll be more educated and not look like a complete moron when you're talking to people that understand this tech or understand money, hard sound principles and so on. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna try and keep this as concise and simple as possible. I mean, they say that if you can't explain a complicated matter as simply as possible, then you don't actually understand that matter. So this is a challenge for me as well. Let's see if I understand Bitcoin. So in order to understand Bitcoin, you need to understand what money is and how money works. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna get academic on you here. Just, just bear with me. So right now we have the fiat standard, the money that you all know and you are accustomed to here today. Now before that, not too long ago, we had the gold standard, which is arguably the best standard we've ever had in history. Even though that came with its own problems, I do admit. Nixon, of course, took us off the gold standard. The dollar is no longer supported by gold and most currencies around the world, if not all, are not supported by gold. They're literally supported by thin air. Fiat is supported by thin air. And what Bitcoin is doing essentially is proposing a Bitcoin standard. Now, now, before I go on, I know what you're all thinking. Bitcoin standard, Bitcoin is too expensive and it's too much energy and it doesn't work. Try going buying chewing gum or a condom in a convenience store with Bitcoin, it just doesn't work. <laughs> yes, of course, if you wanna go buy chewing gum or condoms in a convenience store, then yes, Bitcoin itself may not work depending on those fees. But in the gold standard, you didn't exactly walk around going to shops trying to buy condoms with gold coins. <laughs> Gold was actually held and banknotes represented a fraction of that gold. And although you can actually walk into a convenience store and actually pay with Bitcoin, if you don't mind the fees, you don't have to. That's why there's Lightning Network as a layer two and Lightning Network does work. I don't know where you hear all these people talking about how it doesn't work and it won't work, but it does work. It just needs time to mature and be adopted. So Lightning does work. It is a solution. It's just that it's in its infancy. Anyway, that's not the point of the video. The point of this video is that just like gold, you had gold and you had banknotes representing that gold or fractions of that gold. You can pretty much do the same thing with Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Except now with Bitcoin, you are the bank. Now at this point, people are probably losing their mind in the comment section down below screaming that Bitcoin is too expensive. Bitcoin needs too much energy. Bitcoin is old tech. Except it's not old tech. Bitcoin works as it is for the intended purpose it has. It's not trying to be anything else or compete with other cryptocurrencies. I mean, it's simple. If you're talking about building dApps or doing gaming on the blockchain, then Bitcoin is not your best bet. We know this, but Bitcoin was not invented for this reason. And yes, Bitcoin is expensive. It's expensive to mine and it's expensive to use, but you need Bitcoin to be expensive. See, in order to have hard sound money, you need it to be expensive. Gold is expensive to mine and it's also rare. 
And in order for money to work, it has to be rare and it has to be expensive. Look, let me explain. Long time ago, believe it or not, they used to use seashells for money. And a lot of people make fun of this. Oh, how primitive. They used seashells, but they don't understand what kind of seashells. See, the seashells that were used, they were very rare and very hard to obtain, and you need a lot of energy to go get them. And this worked perfectly for thousands of years. Now, when other people started discovering these tribes and they wanted to trade with them, they tried to trade with gold or everything else they had, these tribes did not care. But as soon as they figured out they wanted seashells, they started coming in with seashells. And this was great. There was a boom. Everybody was happy here because people were getting what they wanted on both sides of the fence. The problem was a lot of these seashells were coming in. And what happened was it was taking away from the rarity of the seashells, thus causing inflation. Same things happened as tribes advanced in tech and it was easier for them to bring seashells. So money needs to be rare and it needs to be expensive to obtain. And just to give you a better example, they even used rocks, big rocks, rare rocks, which would sit in the, in the middle of the village and smaller rocks would represent that rare rock. Just like the gold standard where you have gold in a vault and banknotes represent that gold. When it becomes easy to do this, then it loses its power. Money loses its power, which is why we have inflation today. Does that make sense? And by the way, most Bitcoin, most energy used to mine Bitcoin, it's green energy. I mean, that's been established, proven, and not debatable anymore. As a matter of fact, it could actually help energy by distributing, you know what, I'm not even gonna get into that. I promise that this video is gonna be concise. So with that said, let's compare Bitcoin to fiat to gold. Okay, so this chart shows traits of money between Bitcoin, gold, and fiat. And you will see that Bitcoin is verifiable. This is because of the blockchain. So it's highly verifiable. Gold is moderate and fiat is moderate. Now, all three, meaning Bitcoin, gold, and fiat, they're all fungible. You can exchange these. There's no problem with this. And they're all portable, even though I disagree here. It says Bitcoin is highly portable, gold is low, and fiat is highly portable, but it's not. What I mean is, have you ever tried to travel to another country with over $10,000 on you, $15,000? Sure, you could do it, but you're probably gonna get stopped, questioned, and maybe not even let through. Also, let's say I want to send a million dollars of fiat to my bank account in another country. Exactly, you just can't do it now. Let's move on. Now, when it comes to durability, Bitcoin is moderate, gold is high, and fiat, of course, is low. Let's go to divisibility. You see Bitcoin is very high because you can do 0 0.0000001 Bitcoin. Gold is low because what you're gonna do is sit there and cut gold. Not really, not, not unless you think the gold standard is going and shopping with gold coins and parts of gold coins. And fiat is moderate because yes, you can get change for 100, but maybe it gets harder and harder as you scale, as you go down. As for being scarce, Bitcoin is highly scarce, meaning it's rare. You only have 21 million Bitcoin ever going to be in, the, in existence. Gold is moderately scarce because the truth is you can always find gold. The question is, how expensive is it to mine? And of course, fiat is not scarce at all because you can print the shit out of it whenever you want. A money printer goes brr. Then when it comes to established history, although Bitcoin is now 14 years in existence and is running perfectly, it is actually low here. I think that's a fair assessment. Gold is high because it's ancient. There's some call it God's money. And fiat, of course, is low because fiat is relatively new. If you really think about it in the grand scheme of things, fiat is relatively new. Censorship resistance, Bitcoin is high, gold is moderate, fiat is low. Unforgivable costliness, Bitcoin high, gold high, fiat low. As for openly programmable, well, Bitcoin is high and both gold and fiat is low. Now, don't get confused here with CBDCs, which is also programmable money. That's a bit different because that, they can actually control you, uh, stop your account, uh, take taxes automatically, uh, allow you to buy certain things and not other things and so on. Very different. Bitcoin, they can't do that. That's why they don't like Bitcoin. And when it comes to decentralization, Bitcoin is high, gold is moderate, and fiat is low. 
So here you can actually understand that Bitcoin is better money. It has hard sound principles as money and that's what Bitcoin is trying to do. Everything else, you can't build on Bitcoin, you can't do that. It doesn't matter because Bitcoin is not made for that. It's made to be hard sound money. Now with that said, you might say, Paul, great, I get this, but what about XRP? Isn't XRP faster and better than Bitcoin for transactions? Well, yes, XRP is faster than Bitcoin, but it's not decentralized and it doesn't have the aspects, the other aspects of sound hard money. Yes, it's great for transactions. And please don't tell me it's not centralized right now. I, I, I know some people are going to start saying XRP is not centralized. No, it is centralized. And I can just prove it to you just with one example right now. And let's put this to bed so we can continue. OK, when that thing happened with the truckers in Canada, people were sending Bitcoin. They weren't sending XRP. The reason is very simple. Even though it was cheaper to send XRP, the reason is very simple. Bitcoin transactions cannot be stopped. If you were to send XRP to Russia right now, believe me, they'll find a way to stop those transactions. See, I'm not even talking about the nodes and how things work because I know you've heard this all before. I'm just giving you a simple example here why XRP is centralized and for its use case for making transfers and working with banks worldwide. If you really believe in XRP, if you believe in the concept, it has to be, it has to be centralized because they need to control it for terrorism, AML and so on. Otherwise, it cannot be used. So XRP is great for its use case. It doesn't need to compete with Bitcoin and Bitcoin doesn't need to compete with XRP. Does that make sense? Now, some of you are probably saying, OK, Paul, great. OK, I understand that. But what about Casper? Casper is decentralized and it uses DAGs, which is better tech, which makes it faster. Isn't Casper better than Bitcoin? Well, first of all, Casper is amazing. I actually hold Casper and XRP, by the way, and I think both are amazing tech. And I do think both are going to do very, very well in the bull market. But Casper using DAGs, that's not a plus. It might be a plus for speed, but it also makes it more vulnerable. It also makes it less decentralized. And even if you want to argue that point, and we can argue that point here. Look, I made a video right here on Casper. You can watch after this video. It's right here. I'll also leave a link at the end of the video and in the description down below about Casper and XRP. But as much as you want to argue that point, you have to understand that DAGs or block DAGs are new. It's, it's a new tech. I mean, DAGs was actually first used in 2016 by IOTA, Internet of All Things, and you saw how that played out, and also with Phantom, with the Phantom token. So it still needs to prove itself. It still needs proof of concept. You can't put a whole economy onto something so new. You can't even do it to Bitcoin just yet. You need time. Does that make sense? You need time, you need security, assurability, and so on. You're not going for speed here. Bitcoin's faster than Visa already. If you want to look at the Lightning Network, it's the fastest thing out there right now. It's faster than Solana even. But that's not the point. What cost does it come with? Does that make sense? See, this is why Bitcoin is the best cryptocurrency and is better than 100% of cryptocurrencies out there. Because Bitcoin is not trying to be anything else. Other cryptocurrencies are better than Bitcoin for doing different things. And I agree with that. But those of you comparing Bitcoin to other cryptocurrencies either don't understand crypto, don't understand Bitcoin, or don't understand both. I hope you like this video. Make sure you watch this video right here on Casper next or check out this video on XRP right here. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.